Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Monica Reedus, president of the Democratic Women's Club of Florida. Um, this evening, we are uh, with the training committee putting on a fantastic um, orientation for our DWCF website. Um, we have had a lot of, of folks subscribe over the last um, month or six weeks. Um, and in as much as we have all these new subscriptions, it's important that um, everybody's able to jump in um, and figure things out. And with the help of this tutorial, um, hopefully folks will find that the work that this committee has poured in um, has, has really been fantastic and there's a lot of value in what's been done. Um, so I, I would like to uh, kick this over to Jane Schletweg, who is a member of the training committee and is standing in for the training committee chair, Jessica Ransom, who is in Duval working the polls this evening and wasn't able to join us. So if you are available, Chair Schletweg. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, yes, tonight we have three extraordinary members who are going to walk you through our new website. Uh, the first is Mary Forte Namouche. Mary is currently the second vice president and membership chair of the Democratic Women's Club of Florida. In addition, she is the chair of the website committee. Mary is a tally day leader and an environmental lead on the legislative committee. Mary is past president of the Democratic Women's Club of Central Pinellas, past credentials chair, and climate chair on the DWCF State Board. She has held the position of region co-chair from 2016 to 2017 in region uh, eight. And right now she is uh, uh, chair of region chair of region five. Mary has worked the technical side of the Zoom DWCF convention and the two National Federation of Democratic Women's Conventions. She is current NFDW Credentials Chair and a Backup Nominations Chair for the NFDW Southern Region. Mary's attended a Sea Level Rise Conference at ISPS, the Institute for Strategic Policy and Solutions Conference in 2015. Her interest grew in the changing climate and was accepted for and completed training in 2017 at the Climate Re Realty Leadership Corps, Al Gore's Climate Realty Project. She is listed on the DWCF Speakers Bureau for Climate Change. Before retiring, Mary worked as an IT project manager for Time Inc and Seagram's Beverage Company in New York City, New York. The next panelist is Barbara Lindsay. She has been a member of the Democratic Women's Club of Alachua County since 2019 and is a volunteer with the Democratic Women's Club of Florida website committee. She has been an Alachua County poll worker since 2019 and has also volunteered with campaign activities for several candidates, as well as the Blue Wave Coalition of Alachua County. After visiting the National Memorial for Peace and Justice and the Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama, Barbara became interested in working for racial justice causes. She is a member of the Gainesville Committee of Alachua County Community Remembrance Project, the ACCRP Remembrance Quilt Committee, and the local chapter of the NAACP. Barbara is also a member of the Quilters of Alachua County Day Guild, where she has worked on many community service projects. Before retiring in 2018, Barbara worked in information technology at the University of Florida in Gainesville and at the Computer Science Corporation in Morristown, New Jersey. Finally, our last panelist, Christine Ortiz, 
has been a member of the Democratic Women's Club of St. Johns County since 2020 and acts as their communications chair and as an alternate, alternate legislative liaison. She also volunteers to update the Democratic Women's Club of Florida's website. Although born in Gainesville, Christine did not live in Florida as she served in the United States Army for 23 years as an intelligence warrant officer and afterward had a career with the Department of Energy's Intelligence Division. Seeing so many brilliant progressive scientists and engineers attempting to make the world a better place had a profound effect on Christine. And during, uh, uh, had a profound and enduring effect on Christine. This combined with the 2016 presidential election, she started her political involvement. Now retired, Christine donates her time to the Boxer Aid and Rescue Coalition, which aims to rescue and adopt out boxer dogs throughout Northern Florida. She also enjoys reading, writing, drawing, and golf with her husband, Jose. Mary, it's off to you. Thank you. So I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. I just need to know if you can see it. Are you able to see it? Yes. Can okay. you make it full screen? Oh yeah. So I wanna um, welcome everybody to the 20. 23 um, website. Um, I want to welcome you to dwcf.org. I'm happy to introduce the website committee. The website has extensive content and functionality because of this team. Christine Ortez from St. John's and Barbara Lindsay from Alachua and myself make up the team. We will be adding a fourth person for a help desk, which is Margaret Suttles. Tonight, we will take you on a tour of dwcf.org. There is a lot to see, but don't worry. Know that you cannot break the website. And the best way to learn where everything is, is to explore it on your own. Christine. Thanks, Mary. So there has been in the past a few folks that are having a difficult so time signing up and then logging into the website. So I just wanted to spend a couple minutes going over the how to. Uh, so if you've already done this, you can kind of just let my words kind of wash over you until the next section. Uh, but if you are having a little bit of trouble, let me tell you how it can be done. So at the top of the website, you'll see this little green on green box that says login. You're gonna to wanna to click that. You're gonna to wanna to click those words login. Next, you'll see this box. It says sign up, sign up with Facebook, Google, sign up with email. We want you to sign up with your email. And we want you to use the email that your club has on file for you. Very important. Next slide, please. Let me go back one, Mary. Okay, so once you've entered the email that your club has on file for you, you'll also, you'll see this box. So you'll enter your email and a password of your choice. You'll also hit, I'm not a robot, and then you'll hit sign up. Next slide, please. Now, once you click I'm not a robot and you hit sign up, well, once you click I'm not a robot, you're going to have to complete a puzzle. Now, because we have so much security on our website, you may have to complete more than one puzzle. This is completely normal. You haven't done anything wrong. Sometimes you may have to do it up to three times. Normally, it's just going to be one though. But if it is more than one, it's fine. Okay, and then of course you'd click sign up. Next slide. 
Then you'll see this screen, success. Your member signup has been sent and is awaiting approval. Now, normally you will receive an approval email within 24 to 48 hours. However, we've been inundated with people trying to get into the website. So we ask for just a little bit more time to sift through all of the members and their emails. And uh, so it's, it may take longer than the standard 48 hours. However, once you get that email, you will be ready to log in. Next slide. So after receiving your email saying that you've signed up and now you're ready to log in, you're gonna go back to the homepage and back to that green on green box that says login. And of course you'll click login. Now next, you'll see that same, same sign up box again. And that's confusing because you've already signed up. However, the website will not allow us any other kind of um, graphic interface to provide you. So it's gonna say sign up. However, right under sign up, it's gonna say already a member, log in. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna hit that log in button. It's small, but that's what you're gonna to wanna, to, that's what you're gonna to wanna to click on. Next slide. Now it takes you to a login graphic user interface. And of course you're going to not log in with Facebook or Google, you're gonna log in with email. Then you'll see this box. You're gonna put in your email, your password, and of course you're gonna click log in. Next slide. Now that you're logged in, you're gonna see your username in that login box. And now you're good to go. Now you can see everything that the website has to offer. And like Mary said before, you cannot do anything wrong. You cannot break this. You can click as much as you like and there is, you can't do it any harm. So by all means, click away. Next slide. Okay, so next, let me just show you a few portions of the homepage. So first thing I wanted to tell you is this homepage has got a lot of stuff on it. And because it's got so much stuff on it, it takes a while to load. So you'll go to the website and you'll be like, why can't I scroll down? It's because it's loading. So if you'll just count to 10, give it a few seconds, you'll be able to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see everything that has to offer. Um, secondly, I wanted to bring your attention to the menu. So the main menu runs across the top of the web page. As you can see there, I've got a bunch of red arrows going to the different areas. Now, each one of these that has a red arrow going to it will open onto that page with the exception of items. If you were to click on items, items has its own menu, as you can see there with the purple arrow. Next slide, please. Also on the home page, we have a quick links menu. So a lot of this stuff can be found under items but you don't even have to click on that. That, the quick links menu is right there up front on the top left of the homepage. And you can see it'll take you to places like the store, quarterly reports, uh, the bylaws, and the site map. So that will come in really handy. And again, click around, click all of it. You can't break it. Next slide, please. Now, if you were to scroll down the homepage, you would see at the bottom right, a let's chat button. If you click on that and enter in your information, we will get back to you. There is no fewer than three people that see all of the communications. So someone will get back to you. All you have to do is just hit that let's chat button and, and leave us a message. Also, We've got all sorts of announcements on the homepage and they're updated regularly. So if you don't feel like logging in, you just wanna see the announcements, you can scroll down and see that too. Next slide. Barbara. Yeah, hi, this is Barbara. 
Uh, I'm here to talk about the About page right now. This is where you will find information about the regional clubs and the officers. Um, it opens to a page that looks like this, and um, you can see there's three buttons there that you can choose from. Next slide, please. Uh, if you click on officers, it'll take you to the page that has a listing of all the elected officers and their contact information. If you click on the find a local club, it will show you a map of all the counties that are in each region. And it has buttons on either side where you can click to see information about that region. Uh, then for region chairs, it lists all of the region chairs and their contact information. Next slide, please. So right now I'm gonna focus on the regions buttons. Um, and if you click on one of those buttons, it'll take you to a section of the page that has the um, region uh, club names and the presidents of each of those clubs. Also the region chairperson, and it has each of the counties listed that are in there. Um, over on the right-hand side of each of the web pages on the site, you will see two little buttons. Uh, the top button will take you to the top of the page and the bottom button will take you to the bottom of the page. So this is just a tool if you're scrolling down through a, a long web page and you want to get back to the top so you can get to the menus for that page, then you'll find that top anchor button useful, I believe. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so if you want to see more details about the regions, there are two ways you can do that. You can click on that title in the region section. You can see it's underlined. Or you can use the site map and just click on the region number that's listed in the site map. We'll talk more about the site map later. Uh, but that'll take you to uh, an individual web page for that region. Next slide, please. On those region pages, um, there are places where um, the region chair can upload uh, information, uh, pictures and documents. And the club presidents can send their information that they wanna share for instance, an event poster or something like that. And, um, or some, some kind of news uh, document. And this is where it can be uploaded onto the site so that it can be shared with other people. Next slide, please. So if you want to add a picture to the region page, um, you would click on that add pictures button and you will get a pop-up form that looks like this. You want to choose your region number in the drop-down list. You will want to choose your club name from the drop-down list. And then you will click on the upload image here. This is designed to upload one image at a time. Um, and as soon as you click that button, it'll have a pop-up browser window where you can navigate to where the document is on your computer. And you can click on your document and it will upload it. Once the document or image is uploaded, it'll display the name of it underneath that box where it says upload image here. Uh, a little further down, you'll see that there's a place for you to type in a title of the image. And this is something that will appear if you scroll over the image on your regions page. And um, it'll show actually the club name and the title of the image. Uh, below that, you'll see there are uh, two dates. The first date is when you want that image to begin displaying on your site, on your page. And then the second date is the end date. So for instance, if you had a St. Patrick's Day party, uh, you would probably want to enter an end date of March 18th because that event would already have happened. 
And once that end date um, is when that image will stop displaying on your page. So you don't really have to worry too much about going back and taking down stale information. It happens automatically. Uh, when you when you get to the finishing all the all the uh, fields on the form, then you click the submit button, and it will display a message to tell you that the image has been uploaded. And then you can go back and do the add pictures and do more if you want to. Next slide, please. Uh, the add a document works very much the same way as add a picture. You choose your region number, you choose your club name, uh, you click on the button to upload your document. It will display the name of the document underneath that button. You can put in a title for the document and then it has the start and end dates. Again, when you click submit, it will display a message that your document has successfully uploaded. Next slide, please. Uh, if you want to download any of these, you can. You can highlight the document and click on the download button. It will open the document for viewing in your browser. Uh, and then you can use the local navigation tools. For instance, on a PDF, you would be able to download that document onto your computer, or you would be able to print it or search through it or whatever you would normally do with a document like that. Uh, next slide, please. I want to talk about the legislative area. Um, if you see at the tab at the top for legislation, you can get to it from quick links or just by clicking on the legislative tab at the top of the home page. And right now there's two buttons. One is legislative issues. And this really talks about what we're doing in Tallahassee, um, the information gets updated periodically. The next one is our advocacy awards. So every year at convention, um, we choose uh, a representative or a senator that we feel has been outstanding for the year and we give them an award. Uh, we started this in 2011. Every year we update this page once the legislator has gained the award. Next, I wanna talk about the members page. You'll probably find that you use this page the most. Right now, um, our membership and club information is all standard through here. So right now there is a posting of the current tally days schedule. There is some information now, this is brand new that we just put up of um, FDP action alerts. So periodically, um, Nikki Freed is, is putting out alerts. We are posting those alerts. So if you click on the word open that's underlined, it will take you to a folder. You open that folder up, all the documents are in there. First button is for president's action list. This is the 2022-23 reporting and action items. This is where a president, a region chair would wanna go to find out when let's say your quarterly reports are due. The next one is member materials. And I think this is probably the most active area on the website. There is a number of buttons here. Let's start with officers. There is a listing here, it's the listing that you saw before um, of the elected officers. Then we have standing committee chairs and they are also listed on this page. We have bylaws. Everybody is constantly asking, where are they? They're in the member section. And this is a PDF that is now in what we call a PDF viewer. You can page, you can scroll up and down or turn the page. Um, at the top, you see one of 22. If you wanted to go to page five because you looked at the contents, um, you would just plug a five where the one is. It would take you directly to five. 
You can also download the document. You can print the document. Christine's going to talk about the PDF viewer in uh, more detail at, uh, a little bit further on. We also have our handbook. It works the same way. It is a PDF viewer. It works exactly the same. We have the platform. Both the NFDW and the DWCF platform, it's listed here. It's quite extensive. Uh, the one thing that you don't see because we're not live is that that subway train is moving when you go to it, this page. We have the Speakers Bureau. In the Speakers Bureau, we have the guidelines. And this gives you the guidelines and the best practices. And you can go to the Speakers Bureau. It will list the guidelines at the top. Scroll down and you can see the actual speakers and contact information and exactly what they talk about. Campaigns and candidates. This is a really, really good page. It has a lot of links on it. Um, for instance, DWCF platform, but there's also links to forms that a candidate might want to use if they wanted um, to submit for uh, don't, you know, our support. Um, and so this page gets updated periodically. Christine. Thanks, Mary. So just a couple words about the conventions tab. Next slide, please. So you can get to this page from the main menu on the homepage or from any page actually, because the menu shows at the top. So you click on convention and it'll bring you to this page. And all I will say is that every button that you see here is updated with the most current information and is ready and is good to go. So all things convention, you can come right to this page. Next slide, please. So I wanna talk just quickly about the NFDW button. So if you push, you see it's, it's the tab, the main menu at the top of the screen on the home page. But as Christine said, you'll see it on all the pages. If you click NFDW, that's the National Federation of Democratic Women, it will take you to their website. So you've now left DWCF and you're now at NFDW. And you can go through their website. It works very fine. Christine? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so if you were to go to the items across the um, menu at the, at the top of a page, you would get that this drop down menu. But also, you could go to the quick links as well. And in both, you'll see messaging. So, either way, this is how you can get to messaging. Next slide, please. And messaging is a fantastic page. We have got so much stuff there. We've got research, we've got talking points, we've got voter guides. Uh, it's it's extensive. In fact, it's so extensive that this is another page that you have to give a few seconds to load. If you try and scroll down, you won't be able to do it. It's because there's just so much there. Uh, and each, uh, it, each message, if you want, is in a PDF viewer. So as Mary was talking about before, you can see I've just taken a, I've just enlarged a screenshot of what the top of the PDF viewer looks like. So if you go over to the left, you see the little magnifying glass, you can search for keywords in a document within messaging. Uh, you can go to a specific page just by putting in that number. Uh, if you move over to the right there and you see the arrow, you can zoom in or out with those little plus and minus buttons. You can also print and you can download. Uh, now this is updated regularly, so please check it out and check it out often. Next slide. Now, also from the items drop down menu is news and media. So, here we're placing um, news articles that someone, a, a member, will say, Hey, I think this is interesting. I think everyone should know about this. Please put it on the website. And we did that with that Time article that you see there. Um, people with disabilities are losing 
access to abortion care. So absolutely, if you come across a great article that you think everyone should know about, let us know and we can easily put it on the, on the webpage. But also what's there is our Persister Lister newsletter. So, and I absolutely love putting this on the website because I got to see what everybody across the state was up to. I especially loved it when I read about Bay County, how they had a parade float uh, for 4th of July and they were afraid that people were gonna throw tomatoes at them, but instead they got a bunch of cheers and people were really happy to see them out there. So if for nothing else, go to News and Media to see the newsletter because it is wonderful to see what all the other clubs are up to. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, we're gonna be talking also from the items list, um, from the tab for items and the drop down menu, you can select your quarterly report or you can get to it from quick links on the home page. So when you bring up the quarterly board reports, you're going to see a series of buttons. The first one is for state officers. I'm actually going to talk about the quarterly region reports. And when you bring up the form, you're looking at something called JOT forms. So this takes time to load because it's actually going outside of the system and you're into another software package. This is now the president's reports. And I think all the presidents that are on now are very familiar with this. The region chairs are familiar with this. You would just on the region area where you see the arrows would select the region that your club resides in and then put your email address. And we just do quarterly reporting. You would put the month ending in the quarter. So it would be for the first quarter, um, March 31st. Your club name, the president, your president's name, your preferred phone number. And then this information goes down a little bit more. It's looking for the number of active members that you have at this time, your lifetime members, your associate members, honorary members, student members, and comments about the membership growth or loss. This is important because the region chair can read this and understand what's going on in your club, but so does the second vice president. And by looking at this, you can tell whether you may wanna make a call and ask the president especially on the loss, if there's a number of lost members, this would be a great way to have some help offered. Um, we're not gonna list articles because we put something new out and this form's going to change, but you do wanna put your club's website address, Facebook address. Was there a regional meeting? Did you go to the meeting? Um, and do you require assistance from the state? And that's really big. And the biggie, is the membership list at the bottom. It says browse files. Please attach either an Excel formatted spreadsheet or Google Sheets. We can take it and convert it. So the next thing is several times I've had presidents ask me, can I see an older um, report that I did? Yes, you can through archived president's reports. We also archive region reports and state officers reports. The archive is really a search engine. So this is what it would look like when it pops up and whoever was the last person to do a search, you're going to see that in the search area. So in the upper left-hand corner of the form, you see the magnifying glass, the search and Hernando. If you click on that, it's going to open up a drop down menu where you have advanced filters. You need to do this in order to pull your information in. You can pull up a president's name. You can pull up dates. You probably most of the time are going to be looking for club name. You want to use in the second box the word include. You don't want equal to. And the reason why I'm saying that is you may have put in Hernando, but let's say that somebody filed months before and you're looking for that older report, could have filed it as DWCF of Hernando. If you use equals, 
If it doesn't match DWCF of Hernando, it won't match. If you use the word includes, anything that has the word Hernando in it is going to be brought up. It's the best way to do your search. At that point, once you fill this out, you would click apply filter. And this is the result. You're going to see all the reports. Now this one I happen to do for Barefoot Bay. I used the word barefoot and it brought up all the reports that have been filed. And you can see that January, 2023, October, 2022, March, 2022 on the quarter. Now you can also pull by region. You can pull by date. If you want to see this report from January 14th, you would click the, on the three buttons. You, there's a checkbox, there's an empty star, there's three dots, vertical dots. Click on it. It's going to open up and say view entry. And this is what you're going to get, the report that was filed. Now you can print it or download it. Something that we just put up now, and unfortunately I cannot put a frame around it, uh, because there's a link in there and the frame is disturbing the link. If you want to upload information for the newsletter, you can do it here. If you click on Persister Lister news link, Newsletter link, this form will come up. You can fill up the form and upload what you need to upload and it will get to um, the person that's doing the reports. And the bottom two buttons are the archived regions reports, the archived state officer reports, and they work the same way as the archived president's reports. Barbara? Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the mobile view. This is the view of the site that you get on your web phone, on your smartphone, sorry. And um, what you can see, I've put some examples here from sections of the home page, uh, things that would normally be displayed on a computer monitor side by side are going to be one underneath each other instead of horizontally. And that's just because there's limited real estate when you're looking at a phone. Uh, other than that, all the functionality is there. Um, you can go through the site the same way on the on the phone as you could on a computer. Next slide, please. Uh, when you're using your smartphone, you'll see three little lines up at the top. That's your menu. And if you click on that, it's going to display a little pop up that lists the same menu items that you would see on the regular home page. It's just, as I said, displayed vertically instead of horizontally. And it functions the same way. You can click on those links to take you to those pages. Next slide, please. Uh, if you've been scrolling down towards the bottom of the page and you realize you wanna go back to the top to get to that menu, um, there's a little arrow anchor there on your mobile device that you can click and that will take you back to the top of the page. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a view of the site map. Um, the site map is really a condensed version of the menu system on the website. It's uh, organized as an outline. It has all of the web pages listed in it in a hierarchical order. And you should be able to get from from the home page by clicking site map, you can get to just about any other page on the site in two clicks. It should be very quick for you. This is what it looks like on the mobile over on the left. Um, you'll see it's just vertical, it's a little narrower, otherwise it's the same. Next slide, please. Thank so, you for joining us. Yes, we yeah. hope you enjoyed using the new website. Um, this is just a little bit of information. Um, what I will give you um, an idea of what's happened. We actually have split responsibility between the three of us um, because it is so big. And I have to say that I've enjoyed working with this team. It's been a blast and we've created some 
really unique things and I'm very proud of the system and I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you, uh, panelists. Uh, looks like you did an excellent job this evening. We only have two questions from the audience. The first question is from, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, is from uh, Myra Smith, going back to uh, posting things on the region area. She wants to know if a president can designate another member to post pictures and documents. I'm not uh, sure who that question is, is um, for. And I would have to say that the security would be dependent on what the officers decide it should be. I think that would be just for the region chairs. The presidents would need to submit that information to the region chair and the region chair has access. Okay, wonderful. Paulette uh, uh, asks, is there a minimum size file to upload pictures and or documents? I, I, I do not know. Size. Maximum size. I'm sorry, maximum size. Yeah, um, I, I am not sure what the maximum size would be. Um, it, it may be dependent on uh, the bandwidth of what you can upload. I know that for emails, there's a limit. I can look into that and find out if there is a maximum size, but I haven't encountered that kind of problem yet. So um, I, will, I will follow up and find out what that is. But in the meantime, go ahead and try it. If it's, if it's too big, it'll tell you. All right, well, this might fit in there. Can a club upload their newsletter? As far as I know, they can. They would have to submit it to their region chair, and then the region chair would upload it for them. All right, we do have a few more uh, questions. Uh, will this recording be provided to the attendees? Absolutely, this recording will go on the YouTube channel. Wonderful. And um, uh, then we have a few thank yous uh, that uh, people have actually been on the site and found it very easy to use. Uh, our pictures, uh, JPEG or P PNG, or does it, doesn't it matter? It has to be one of the either if it's a picture. Okay. And, and that does it for the questions tonight. I believe that Elise has a uh, short survey um, poll that she's going to send out now. <clears throat> yes, mm -hmm. it's coming now. Did you launch it? Hi. There we go.
Okay, we're at 100% participation. Elise? The first question was, I will be able to use what I learned today. 75% of you said you strongly agree. That's wonderful. The second question was organization delivery of, of content was effective. And 80, 86% of you said strongly agree. So it looks like it was a very good evening. Um, you can find this, uh, this meeting on uh, this training on uh, the DWCF YouTube channel and we'll get it up by Wednesday. I wanna thank all of you for participating tonight. These ladies worked so hard pulling this together and just wanna give you all a round of applause because you did a great job and we're so thankful for your work. Um, have a good evening and thanks again for joining us. <laughs>